Fearscape Media Network, exploring the unknown, one podcast at a time. Fearscape, a paranormal podcast, part of the Fearscape Media Network. Prepare to be spooked. <laughs> New episodes every Wednesday on all major podcast platforms. Find out more at fearscapepodcast.com. Ghost in the Attic, Spies in the Basement is a paranormal true crime podcast. If you enjoy tales of horror, lore, and the unexplained, murders, mystery, and so much more, tune into our bi weekly podcast. With us, your hosts, Anna Temperley and Lindsay Behe, coming March 17th to the Fearscape Media Podcast Network. Available on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, and wherever else you may listen to your podcasts. Coming to you from nowhere, a suburb of parts unknown, your ghoulish hosts for an evening of terror, Stephen Gearhart and Lance Wayne, the Misters of the Dark. <laughs> Good evening, dear friends. Welcome to another terrifying episode of Misters of the Dark, the greatest horror podcast in the history of horror podcasting. As always, we're beaming directly to you from nowhere, a suburb of parts unknown, and I'm your head mister, Lord Stefan Gearhart. And I'm your co-mister, the man with no name, Lance Wayne. And I think you'll be pleased to hear, Stefan, that you shouldn't fret over tonight's guest. I followed your orders implicably. So you read the books? Yes, I read the books. Good, 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 good man, Lance, I must admit. I tell you, you had me a little on edge because I know you're not much of a reader outside of the occasional obituary from time to time. <laughs> Well, as I stated earlier, my dear headmaster, you had no need to worry. I breezed right through it. Right through it? Huh? Yep. I was a little surprised that you gave me something so light. But... Um, Lance, let me see that book. What is this? What is this? What is this? <gasps> oh my god, you idiot! What? The Necronomicon? Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, now hold on a minute. Don't go making accusations. I never do anything to those bodies after we kill them. No, you asshole. The Book of the Dead. The, the Book of the what? Oh, you've really gone and done it now. <laughs> Stephen, what do we do? I don't know. Just keep it cool. We'll have to settle this mess after our guests have left. Dear friends, will you please welcome horror authors Lindsay Behe and Anna Temperley. Hey, ladies, thank you guys so much for coming over to the dilapidated mansion. Yes, so hello. Excited. Hi. Sorry, Hi, we didn't bring any wine. I drank it on the way over here. Oh, oh. we have we have some uh, Klingon blood wine. I can't promise Ooh. it's oh, Klingon yes. blood, but it's Klingon. And, and the blood of virgins. Blood. And the blood of, of virgins. So my, my old best friend, I'm going to tell you this right now before we even get started. My best friend uh, from college, uh, Santosh, he had the... <laughs> He had this roommate that had a speech impediment. Now, I'm not making fun of speech impediments, y'all. I'm just saying. But this guy couldn't say his V's, and it was always with a W. And he was always like, uh, Santosh, I just hate the fact that I'm still a virgin. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's adorable. I'm, Send all your that, hate mail. I'm just that, wary, that wary upset about it. Women? Huh? I said that line didn't get him any women. Oh, good God, no, no. He looked like the penguin from Batman oh. Returns. Oh my God. Uh, well, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, I don't even remember the dude's name, and I'm glad because I'd pull, totally put him on blast. Um, but it's just I. Hey, Danny every DeVito time... has a wife, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Rita, 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 Rita Perlman. Perlman. Yeah, Rita Perlman. She looks like um, Dio. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Like she Dio. looks like freaking Dio. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to not see her anymore and not think about Dio. 
That's awesome. But yeah, so every time I hear virgin, immediately my brain goes to virgin and it's Word. over. It's it's over. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you guys coming over. We um, are so pumped to have some horror authors. And uh, listen, we're not going to pigeonhole you. We know you're more than just horror. Okay. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. know you're more than just horror. <laughs> But we, okay. like, we like horror and we like what you've done. <laughs> so, well, thank you. Uh, well, thanks. So I uh, want to get started. Um, I know uh, first and foremost, um, you know, the books I'm mostly familiar with are the ones that, of course, Lindsay and I go way back a little bit because I read Paranormalish. Um, she's had some stories on some of my other shows and some things like that. Such a fun book. And then, Anna, thank I you. love your collection of Dark Tales Twisted. Oh, thank you. So much fun. But the cool thing is, is um, you guys also wrote a book book together isn't that right we did we We co-authored lost in gray lost in gray i mean i'm excited about that what's that about is what's that one about do you want to take that one Lindsay, or do you want me to take Uh, it sure so basically what it's about is uh becca charles her life is just kind of spinning out of control and she made some mistakes in her past and now she's being haunted by them and she feels like she's just going absolutely insane and you have to kind of go with her to see how that goes. That's so much mm-hmm. fun. Uh, y- you know, now, how did you guys get connected? Have you guys known each other a long time? Um, you know, or was it just something that just kind of happened to write something together? Um, we met, our husbands were former military and mm-hmm. we were stationed at the same base in Colorado. And she lived like three doors down from me. And we met through my neighbor who my husband worked with and she just happened to already know. And the rest is history. That's oh, convenient. Wow. That's can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah, it, it's kind of funny. Like my daughter met her husband first. That's how the introductions actually happened. And he was like, oh, "You know, wow. your kid's weird, right?" I was like, "Oh yeah, what'd she do now?" <laughs> what you, you do? know? <laughs> Man, I'm 32. Think... My parents still gotta ask that. Yeah, same with <laughs> same with mine. I absolutely love that. Um, so very very cool. Um, now, uh, now, uh, you know, the obvious things, you know, we got to hit up is how did you get, uh, your fascination of horror? Like, what is it that led you to say, you know what, this is something that I'm interested in. I want to write about scary stuff. Like for both of you, this is a good question for both of you to ask or to answer separately. Um, for me personally, my first like dive into like messed up books was like V.C. Andrews, which is not horror lit at all, but like they're just Mm. screwed up. And when you're reading them at like 12, it kind (laughs) of warps your brain into a a, a certain (laughs) way of reading, so to speak. And then I got into like Stephen King, obviously, who doesn't love Stephen King. Mm -hmm. Um, But I really love Gillian Flynn. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with her Mm -hmm. work. She uh, wrote Gone Girl. Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um. So Gone Girl, it, I seen the movie poster first and it had Ben Affleck on it looking all like broody and dark and mysterious. And, and I was like, ben Affleck okay. Pre-Batman. So, yeah, pre-Batman. <laughs> like he's playing a dark, ominous role. Like I'm interested. Turns out it was a book and I got really interested in the book and I devoured it in a day. Like her brain, the way it works, the way she writes, like it's not necessarily horror lit. It's more thriller like psychological like Mm -hmm. mind warp type stuff and i just i love it i those are the type of books i can just like get lost in for hours and the next thing you know the sun's peeking through the blinds and you're like "Uh oh yeah forgot to sleep (laughs) (laughs) that's a never-ending story i saw that movie it's good but she actually wrote the screenplay for the movie that's why it's so good oh Oh, that's interesting i didn't know that yeah a little tidbit i have not seen i have not read the book but i have definitely seen the movie excellent yeah same here yeah um, very, very cool. Yeah, I very much uh, agree with you. I'm like that. Yeah, I get I get lost. And, and I agree with you, too. It's like uh, 50 years ago, thriller really wasn't a thing. It was just you either had horror, sci-fi, drama, or comedy. I mean, that was really about it. Or and, mysteries, you know, maybe. Mystery, mystery, yeah, yeah, mystery yeah. kind of hit Agatha thriller Christ. a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I like that. And I do. I think thriller kind of hits horror more than we think. Well, yeah, because mm-hmm. if you think about it, it dives into the psyche. It yes. teaches you that yeah, people yeah. are the monsters, not that the monsters are like figmental like demons and whatnot or right. an alien and, spider thing living in the sewers <laughs> right well and even then sometimes you know the human monsters are j- little too real they're like yeah, like, the guy like, next silence door, the, you know? like silence of the lambs and stuff Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean if it wasn't honestly if it wasn't for all the you know because 
that film does have some gorier parts. It, it, if they cut that out, it probably would just be a straight up thriller. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there was a lot of talk about that when it got nominated. You yeah, know, yeah, because it, they didn't want to say right. horror. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they yeah. did not want to say horror, but it is. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, to each his own. It's also a point of view, you know, because horror to me is is different than horror to you. And, and is it thriller? Is it mystery? Is it body horror? Is it all of these different things? It's very very intriguing i just like stuff that makes me um think and be scared at the same time (laughs) like my wife (laughs) keeps me on my toes keeps me on my toes (laughs) and what about you Lindsay? how about you how did you get into horror well it started my mom has always been a stephen king fan and so the books were just always around the house and i remember reading some i remember trying to read some probably way too young and i just (laughs) couldn't (laughs) follow and mm-hmm. then i read a little bit in high school and then more stephen king in adulthood or whatever but then i got into like more horror like movie type stuff when i started working in a haunted house in frankfurt yeah oh, cool. and uh and so like you're around all the characters and so you have to watch the movies to see what's going on and yeah the rest is history i guess <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history i agree with that too yeah I, you know, it's f- so funny. I mean, Stephen King is definitely a gateway drug. And it, yes. it's, it's yeah. funny hearing your story because that reminds me, my dad was a Stephen King fan, right? And so it was the same thing. And I'm like 10 trying to read The Stand. And I'm like, what is this? Like, yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> Hard to follow that young, but I yeah, tried. You I know, remember trying I would... to read The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Yeah. And I don't know if I ever finished it, but... Yep. I was probably like fourth grade and I couldn't read that. What what got me? <laughs> Nor should you read that in fourth grade. No, <laughs> right. The one that got me, what, what ended up, my first full Stephen King book was the first Dark Tower book because the copy that I had had like um, uh, painted pictures throughout mm. it. It was an illustrated version. Um, mm. I mean, it probably had 10, 15 and beautiful pictures. I mean, I had this probably till up till about two or three years ago until I gave it to my nephew. Um, but yeah, that was the one that I read through because I read comic books a lot. And so like I knew that if I could keep reading, I could get to this chapter that would have this beautiful art that looked like that um, famous fantasy artist guy looked Frank very Rosetta. similar. Yeah, Frank Rosetti, but uh, was sorry (laughs) but was all about the gunslinger like it was so so cool that's that's what drew me in and then uh i realized that a lot of movies i had already seen and stuff like that were was that same author and and stuff like that good times you got i uh i I, like uh, probably about a year and a half ago i listened to uh the uh audio uh book of uh it uh i think what is that what is that guy's name He's, he played he played Jack Torrance in the TV version of The Shining. Is it Steve Webber? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, from uh, from Wings, the guy from, from Wings. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I listened to that and it was like twenty four hours long. Ooh. And, uh, oh, it took me so long to read it. Same. Yeah. Same. <laughs> but I tell you, I tell you, for some reason, listening to it in audio form because I, I mean, it took me like a month. And then there was just one weekend where I had nothing to do, so I was like, I'm just gonna lay around and listen to this. By mm-hmm. the end of it, I remember I was driving to work at like 5:30 in the morning, finishing this thing up finally, and I was literally like, because <laughs> it just <laughs> at the such... end it gets a little twisted, yeah. Oh my gosh, it just it melted my brain. It, oh. <laughs> I read Under the Dome. That was my first big. I read oh, the short stories, but Under the Dome, and there's a there's a scene in there where guy no names guy kills girl kills other girl kills other girl hides them in a specific location and then defiles their corpses and i was like what did i get myself into <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. why can't i stop <laughs> and i was like exactly why can't i stop and that's mm-hmm. the part of my brain that i'm fascinated by it's like what makes me tick it, it yeah. and, and when people can write things that make me go huh that's new yeah. I like I like finding yeah. that out about myself. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I like to call it crossing the English class line. Because in high school, <laughs> oh. you, there's only so much you can do or else you're getting sent to the counselor's office. So whether yeah. you're reading or writing, you cross that line of what's appropriate yeah. for high school English class. <laughs> that's awesome. That's an that's awesome way of putting it. We struggled a lot with that with Lost and Grace. She was like, I don't know. And I was like, no, let's do it. Let's drive. Like, we're not in high school. We're adults. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the more messed up, the better. I mean, yeah. Sell! <laughs> That's like college. It's, it's I can remember. Crazy. 
I can remember I, I took a poetry class and um, my professor was literally the professor from the beginning or uh, the middle there or the end of uh, Dead Poet Society, the one that um, replaced Robin Williams. Um, like he was literally like, I don't listen, you guys. I know most of you have probably seen Dead Poet Society. And we don't need that shit in here. There's a form <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I'm going to enjoy this class. Yeah, really. And I can remember. I wrote, Well, with all that being said, I'm going to. I, I wrote this poem that was about um, I was abused as a kid and I wrote my very first memory is is of being abused by my stepfather and I wrote a poem about it because he wanted to write about our um, our thing and he tried to tell me I made it up and was just telling me that there was too much emotion in it and all this different stuff and I'm like who are you Why in are poetry you next yeah, yeah and, and then there's and then he's like, by the way, uh, buy my book. It's at Barnes and Noble. So we decided uh, what, to go to what? Barnes and Noble and we check out his book of poetry and it was God awful. Was it, it was, dry? Oh, uh, if you didn't, if you can't no have emotion surprise. in poetry, I, oh, I, it was so oh. dry. It was like the owl hoots in the tree and the oh. stars shine down and his eye glistens. There's it's like telling a, like, it's it was telling so a, bad. It's like telling a guitar player, you know, can, can you play more bland? Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, oh you know, it's the same God. thing. It's like he, like something else somebody wrote. He was like, "This is cliche. It's uh, what you wrote is cliche. It's it's just like this poet. None of us had ever heard of that poet in our entire lives. So is something cliche if you've never heard of them before? Like you know, like that's the question, right? Is it cliche if just because someone's written it somewhere around the world, like? It, it was weird. Somebody's written everything somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Joseph Campbell will tell you that too. Like every, there's only what, like two real stories in the entire yeah. world or something like that. Well, it's, uh, uh, I, I don't think the quote is, he, I think he quotes whoever quoted this, but I've always heard, I've always heard Richard O'Brien, the guy who wrote, pretty much created Rocky Horror. Mm -hmm. He, I've, I've heard him say in countless interviews that anybody that thinks they're original has no sense of history. Hmm. I, I, I think that about that quote a lot. Mm-hmm. This is the mm -hmm. truth. So, um, well, and that's something I struggle with when I write is like, has this been done before? Is this original enough? And then at some point you just have to say, well, I'm writing this, so it's my take on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, mm -mm. I, I, you know, uh, my dad, God, as much as he loves Stephen King, he don't read much of that anymore. He's like, old and does nothing but read mystery books now like I mean, he reads like four or five a week like oh, wow. he has just completely emptied the library he's now on kindle he's like empty kindle like oh, and wow. he's watching movies with him because like 10 minutes in he's like it was the guy that has the cat like i'm like <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> He should be a detective. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's he's that guy. And it's not, he loves the same old shit, right? That's that's his thing. It's like, it doesn't matter to him that it's, he loves reading it and he loves those things. So we love those stories. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, um, to me, it's about what, what can you add to that story with your own personal flavor? Yeah. Yes. Is the question, which which brings me to you, and I wanted to talk about the dedication, which is a Ooh, really yes. cool book. Thank um, you. And I, I saved it on purpose to talk about that uh, particular flavor there, because you know we have some short stories, we've got a, a book with Lindsay, but then we've got this powerhouse book that needs to have <laughs> mm -hmm. like twenty books um, in the series. You know, like so, uh, tell us a little bit more about this and where this came, this idea came from. <laughs> so um, I tend to have like repeat nightmares. And that's how like the the gods are telling me like write this story. <laughs> it's like the aliens are tuning into me or something. I don't know. So I just I had this nightmare where I went to church with my sister in law and they were all in like white robes or gray robes. And if you weren't a member, you were in a gray robe. And I was like, well, how do you join this stupid church? And she was like, oh, you just tithe. And I was like, okay, well, how much money do you need? Because, like, I'm kind of broke. And she was like, oh, you, they just need your soul. And then I woke up and I was like, that, that's my <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so, but then I had it, like, seven times. And I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm not going to write it exactly like that because it'll make a lot of churchy people angry. So I'm going to put a little bit more of a demonic spin to it. So I, I figured that 
the the premise of the book is it's a Xandamal, he's a demon, and he's bored with his afterlife. He wants to shake up his hell, so to speak. And how does he do that? He he lures a preacher amongst others into collecting souls for him at a church, which happens to be built on a crossroads. Mm. So that's the dedication. You gotta love it, man. Wow. I I love crossroad demons. I'm a sucker for Crawley from Supernatural, uh, as well. Animal has a lot like Crawley. I feel you know, He's and sassy. Robert Johnson's story. I mean, I I I just love crossroads demons because it, it's 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 funny to think about a demon. Um, because we think about them in a sense being all powerful and things like that. Yet a crossroads demon is kind of like has a purpose, like a very specific purpose. It's, and they're low on the totem pole. Yes. Yes. I love that. And that's why I love this putting a church right there. And so it's like every time I see a church, if it's at a crossroads, I already know where I'm what I'm going to be thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, it's funny, too, to me, because like I made him sassy and he hates technology but then he gets like a cell phone in the book mm -hmm. and he's like why do i have this human thing oh wait to appear more human and it's just like i tried to make it like why would a crouchy a crotchy old demon have a cell phone oh to appear more human because he's trying to right. blend in yeah like, right. like it's Lindsey Graham. things yeah like Lindsey Graham. it's funny because i saw Lindsey graham uh on uh the news like um i don't know i guess during the um hearing for the riots and stuff and he's walking down uh there and he's on his phone why well, is legit a flip phone like <laughs> like like he he went into aarp and was like hey i'll sign up for one of those free phones please <laughs> like, that's what, i'm like you're in congress if anybody needs a smartphone it's you like Oh man, that's just some funny shit, man. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, dedication is super cool. Um, I want to get back to you, Lindsay, because um, I've read Paranormal for like 50 million times because I keep wanting to oh. steal all the stories and put them on all my shows. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, um, and uh, but so tell me about Paranormalish um, because I know that there's some true stories in there as well as fiction and stuff like that. And so how did that all come about for you and um what are some of your favorite kind of stories you don't have to tell the whole story but just kind of talk about your favorite ones in there well hmm it all started a lot of it kind of like what anna said is i have a tendency to have nightmares and so it really that mixed with some anxiety makes your brain just go all sorts of different places <laughs> and um then also <laughs> add in i have had some paranormal experiences so then you add that some in good ones too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I will say there are a few that in the in paranormalish that are a little embellished just to make it sound more like a story. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one in particular. It was um, I can't remember the title right now, of course, but it's the story where it starts where the girl, the narrator was ten and mm -hmm. is seeing ghosts and stuff. A lot of that is from my real life, but slightly exaggerated. And I remember my dad read it and he goes, "You're telling me this has all been happening since you were ten years old." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, only some of it, only some of it. <laughs> and, um, Who did we raise? <laughs> people are like, how did I go my, her, her whole life never knowing this? <laughs> <laughs> I should have tried talking to her. <laughs> That'll make or break a, she a parental, uh, parental kid relationship. That'll make or break it there. Because you're either your parents are either going to be like, oh, God, what happened to you? Or you see that shit, too? Like, that's oh, my <laughs> mom, for sure. Like, I'm that's what second, my mom. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when my kids tell me weird things, uh, I'm always like, oh, oh, are you sure you weren't dreaming? But in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, she said she saw this. Okay, I'm taking notes and I'm going to research this later. Oh, man, <laughs> um, my co-host on um, Fearscape, we talk about that all the time because he has twins. Both of them see shit all the time. And um, he's like, God, I don't want to not tell them. But I also know it'll scare them. But I exactly. also want to tell them, hey, I believe this, too. It is real. You're not crazy. Um, and so he's always kind of like skirting the line and trying to find ways Story to of my like, life, honestly. tell them. Um, but our friend Victoria, she grew up in a household that was very, very haunted in California. And there was this knocking that was like at her like window or something every night or whatever. She finally like tells her mom and dad and her mom and dad are like, well, yeah, the place is haunted. Like <laughs> They're like, and, you know, because she's like, do you hear it right now? They're like, yeah, we hear it right now. And that scared her even more. She's like, I, I'm glad they told me but like i was so scared i couldn't i slept with them for a month oh <laughs> well you know <laughs> what's funny is uh 
one the first ghost I ever saw, I was some maybe like late elementary school age. I don't remember exactly. And I woke up and I saw a silhouette sitting on the end, end of my bed. Mm. And I'm sitting here like, who's on my bed? Oh, nobody like hiding under the blankets. <laughs> like, please just fall asleep. Please just fall asleep. As an adult, a few years ago, I'm on the phone with my sister. And apparently a lot of our friends who grew up in the same neighborhood have all seen that same woman. Oh, oh wow. and I'm like, ah. like nobody told me. <laughs> See, now, also, why do we think blankets can save us? I, I don't know, but they do. <laughs> they do. I used to think Dracula was gonna get me all the time. I slept with my rosary and a uh, like a, a a necklace of garlic every night. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, and I would get night hags early on, and like mm. that the garlic would help bring me out sometimes. <laughs> like that was like legit. the overwhelming smell. Like a nice oh, grounding. Yeah, because yeah. much like you guys, I've had um, nightmares that have gone. The difference is, is mine aren't repeating. Mine have continued. I've literally had a storyline that's existed since I was like four years old that has oh, continued wow. it's been probably about a year and a half since i've had one but i've been trying one of these days i'm gonna write this whole my mom down. deals with that <laughs> yeah it's an interesting story it's about vampires because when i was a kid they scared me more than anything and then i got into college where i started thinking they were cool because of buffy and stuff like that and i was able to defeat them all of a sudden and like yeah. you know then like later they started evolving and i couldn't it was just crazy it continues it's really cool <laughs> That my mom really deals cool. with that yeah she's yeah. trying to compile them to, into a story one day yep i will too i promise um but your <laughs> mom uh lindsay as well like um has dealt with some night hag stuff too because i i did yeah. one of her stories like, um yeah she uh, she deals with um i'm not gonna remember the name of it now it's not sleep paralysis it's omnigagia or something like that it's where you're still dreaming when you wake up yeah and so basically she'll wake up and she'll see like a skeleton yep, like same. just hanging out in her living room or whatever and uh so i can't even imagine how terrifying that is oh, I, get, I, yeah. I deal with it as well um you know one of the weird things that happened to me one time um is one of the uh night hags that was there they always like a, lately a lot of them have like these really long gangly arms they almost look like mm monkeys or something but anyways one was sitting on my chest right and it's like breathing and it's talking to me and all this stuff and, and i'm like i'm trying to scream for my wife's name i'm trying to like call her name because uh, she could wake me up and um well she kind of stirs and she's like Stephen, is everything okay and the de like the demon thing like puts his hand over her face and goes mm -mm. Oh, yeah. and she goes <laughs> and falls right back to sleep oh, and i'm like no. and i'm oh. like <laughs> I'll be like, this is the moment the demon's real. <laughs> that was, shit that I have something to admit. Like, did I really I, see that? Like, I have something to admit. That was really me. Uh, no, me. I mean, same size. <laughs> yeah. Uh, three I, feet, I, 12. I just, I just like watching the you while sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I definitely have that too. And that's got to be, that's so frightening. I'm like, just, you know, uh, man, I can remember getting like my leg, I, you know, my leg, there was like a, a portal on a wall every once in a while i sleep backwards i don't know why um but it, I, I used to do it a lot and i had my um head at the foot of the bed while i wake up and this demon comes through the wall and i can see this like portal almost like the uh the warp um the wormhole in deep space nine it almost looks mm -hmm. kind of just like that and like he starts dragging me into the hole and my foot's up against the wall like when I finally am able to scream for my best friend who's in the next room, he comes running in and I'm crouched up against the wall. Oh, and so no. I was like, did that happen? Like, <laughs> so <laughs> there's some crazy wild. shit out there. Yeah. That's not even fiction. There's some crazy shit out there. Yes. Um, and so what about you, Anna? What about for Twisted there? Is, is there any of that that comes from real life for you or is it all just straight from the um, brain? <laughs> So my son like escaped my house at one point and we had to call 911 to find him. Oh he was just being a jerk and hiding in the bushes out in the in like the forest behind my house and the Man. cop bumped into him and he goes, "Excuse me, I'm hiding here." So they they weren't really all that concerned after that. They're like, "Oh, this kid's just pulling a prank." So then um he tried to get out in the middle of the night. So I wrote a story about um, the little boy that goes uh, to live with the gremlins or goblins or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was about him escaping in the middle of the night. Like, interesting. Because my son escaped twice. And then uh, the the story that has a kid named Liam in it, at the I think it's the very last story in the book. Um, 
was one of those repeat dreams I had and it was about so my son was in my closet but then I was like why are you in my closet and he was like shush I'm trying to sleep and he was like in my bed and then the thing in my closet turned its head like an owl. Oh, I get chills. Oh, and, shit. Oh, and like his God. eyes went black and I was like, oh, and then the next night I dreamed that it was my husband that was the doppelganger and it was just like repeated over and over and over again. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to write this because it's too crazy I've, not to I've write. chills. <laughs> but Everybody yeah. thinks that shit just happens to kids. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um, mm-hmm. I've seen like I was sitting at my niece's house and she lives kind of like downtown in the town that we live in. It's not like the worst neighborhood, but you know, it could be better. Mm-hmm. Um, and the doorknob like starts to turn and I was like, oh, we're going to die. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's man. like 1130 at night. We're going to die right now because mm-hmm. everybody that was supposed to be in the house was in the house mm. and the door like pushes open all like, you know, movie style slow. Yeah, there's no one there. Oh jeez! Nobody. Oh my gosh! And I, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna be bad." So I, my anxiety like took a back seat, and I went outside and I like looked around. There was fight or flight, man. There, yep. there was nobody <laughs> yeah. there, and I was like, "Oh, so that was a ghost." And then she's got sage and like, like yeah. this little like feather, and she's like, "Hmm, hmm," <laughs> trying not to cry. And I was like, "Yeah, this is messed up." I was like. It's gonna be okay. She's like, I'm gonna sleep at grandma's. I was like, no, I was like, it's gonna be fine. She's like, we don't have enough wine for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny. It's like this so kind- many of us like have like these stories and stuff like that. And like, you know, we get really into horror, we get it really into the paranormal and things like that. Yet people always ask me all the time, why are you still so scared all the time? Doesn't that bother you? And I'm like, I don't know. But like my friend Josh, he's coming out to visit me in Phoenix and um, we're going to go out into the desert and go look for UFOs. Like, it's Ooh, be crazy. fun. Um, and we've got like um, night vision cameras and everything. It's going to be crazy. But anyways, he's like, what would you do if a gray alien showed up in front of us? I said, well, I'll either pass out push yeah. you in front of it or run there's there's no there's nothing else it's, it would be push those. you in front of it run then pass out That's what, yeah. well, he, said, he said you would try to run you would get scared because you would uh you try you'd almost trip you'd think it was grabbing you you'd pass mm-hmm. out it would hit me and then i would fall forward into the alien is what he said you know i, like, I mean i'm a three yeah student. Yeah. You know, I will say I had to drive through uh we went to Nevada this last summer for a family thing and we had to drive through Roswell and Area 51. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. And both both times especially driving like right in the outskirts of like Roswell it's just fields and there's nobody around and I was just like, "Oh god, like this is how we die." <laughs> and then oh, um, on Does our it way feel back like driving through Kansas? Yeah. No, it's like Kansas is boring, <laughs> but then like driving to the out, I felt uneasy and I was like, oh, this is it for sure. But then driving back from Nevada back down to Texas, we hit Roswell at like 4 a.m. Yeah. And I was like, oh, great. And surprisingly, uh, there were people that were just out riding bikes at like 4 a.m. Oh, wow. And, and I was like, at first I was like, they just must be on drugs. But then I mentioned it to my dad and he was like, or they were just trying to fit in with the humans. Mm. <laughs> Didn't That's quite so get it. Funny. But no, um, actually nothing happened though, but it was very uneasy to drive through. But there was one time, my husband, we live in West Texas, oil filled life. Um, for a while, a few years ago, he actually worked in New Mexico. And there was one weekend where the kids and I loaded up and we drove to New Mexico to visit him. And we are in some no-name town, like, borderline, like, right before New Mexico and Texas. I don't know where we were. I can't even remember. There was no cell phone service, no radio stations, no other cars on the road, nothing. And I just see a bright light just go straight down the sky. Mm-hmm. And oh, I was man. like, oh. <laughs> and um, so I remember, you know, when you come across a town in the distance and there's just, like, faint light. Mm-hmm. And like, and you know that there's a town coming up. Yep. That started happening, and I was like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do if I drive up here and it's actually a crashed UFO. 
<laughs> and it turned out to just be a town, but I've never been so scared in my life driving. Yeah, yeah. that phone call was intense. She's like, once I got cell phone I service, finally I'm like, have cell phone service. I don't know what to do. I think I'm gonna find a UFO. And I was like, wait, wait, backstory. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I have your story. We are actually looking to use it soon because we've been kind of doing on my other show because we've been doing uh, UAP and UFO sightings as our listener stories. So I've actually I'm you should talk to my it. sisters about that. Oh, totally. We would mm -hmm. totally do that. But yeah, I used to live in New Mexico. So I know yeah. uh, I went down to Roswell. I've been there a couple times. It's actually a pretty shitty town. It is. Uh, though the McDonald's is super cool. because I cool. never saw it. I've seen pictures uh, of it online. But when we cool. drove through, we must have missed it. Um, but I went into the museum and it's pretty lame. It's literally just like blown up uh, pictures of newspaper articles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 20 bucks to get in. You're like, I could have saw that on Google. Uh, but, but anyways, we were driving home. We left really late at night and we're driving home. We're probably like 25 minutes outside of Roswell and um, moonless night. And mm -hmm. uh, there's no one on the road. It's the middle of you know the desert. And like my friend's like, stop the car. And so we get out, it's so black. I can't see the hand in front of my face. That's how crazy it was. But we looked up and I never saw so many stars in my entire life. I was like, no wonder a damn UFO crashed over here. <laughs> yeah. Like, look, I'm like, I was, I was so mad. I didn't see anything because I was just like, this is the scariest shit. And then a cow mood and I jumped about 50 <laughs> feet in the air. <laughs> you know, there's actually um, an alien grave at an old cemetery in Aurora, Texas. Really? That, um, what? My, yeah, my oh. dad and I, my, we used to live in Fort Worth and it's a town around the Fort Worth area. And um, right before we moved out here, one of my friends was like, well, you know about the alien grave. I was like, what? <laughs> I've lived here for five years and you're just now telling me. Yeah. But um, so my dad was visiting at the time. So we loaded the kids up and drove and we went and visited it. And it's just a big rock that people leave like all sorts of memorabilia around it like we left like some pennies on it mm -hmm. and uh it was wild but and then and then on the ghost side of things while we're walking around there's a bunch of old graves you know it's a really old just the alien crashed in the 1800s allegedly and um so it's like a really old cemetery and my now almost seven-year-old daughter was just saying some like weird stuff about some of the graves and i wish i could remember exactly what it was i think she was like talking about how like these were twins and like just stuff that she shouldn't have known just right, walking around Lord. the cemetery and she was like so sad that we didn't have flowers to put on every single grave oh she has <laughs> such like, a big heart oh but she I, she's my one that is definitely and you'll find this in my next stuff. book alienish no. <laughs> <laughs> no it should just be called shit nora says shit. absolutely some of the stuff that like the doll the creepy doll the oh doll. i forgot about that well we are we were actually writing lost and gray at the time so we're already on facetime all the time mm -hmm. it was even more so during that two-week period that we wrote the book and she's sitting there she was what four at the time yeah so she was still at home and she's just like you remember when we went on that walk and we went into that empty house and there was nobody lived there, but there was a doll and she followed us home. And I'm like, what are you talking oh about? My God. And she was and so I was adamant. Like, Do you have this doll? We were like, show she us goes, the doll. No. She, goes, no. she goes, no, she can't come to us. Mm -hmm. Or like, she's like, she can't get to us now though. And I'm like, yeah. I sure hope not. <laughs> It's like an amateur, yeah, never, like the little girl. She had that friend, you know, that was the doll, whatever her name was. Well, isn't the p premise of Poltergeist like they talk to her through the TV, like the TV? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Annabelle, my God, yeah, mm -hmm. Annabelle, yeah. Chucky. Speaking, speaking of Annabelle, have you guys ever been to uh, Zach Baggins' like museum? Of, no, I have um, not heard yet. of it. Heard Thanks. of it? I haven't ever been, but it's on my bucket list. It's not. I hate Zach Baggins, but I want to see. I do too, but I want to see all the <laughs> weird yeah. stuff. I know. That's right? what everybody says. Same about thing Zach with Baggins. the like the Warren like Museum. I want to see the Warren stuff too. Friend in front of the, the, the Aaron. Poor stuff. Aaron. I know. Like, this this ghost will slit your throat. Aaron, go in there. I know. He's like, <laughs> fuck you, ghost. What are you gonna do? You gonna fucking yeah. come? And then the ghost comes at him. He's like, here, Aaron. You can get him. Yeah, he's, <laughs> like, he's, he's, he's like, like, he's like, like, he's like, like in this room. 
He's like King Bro of the ghost hunting community. But yeah, I want to see that museum. Uh, bros, I want to see the, uh, the Warrens Museum, their stuff too, to see the original Annabelle. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, yeah. Definitely. Are they still doing that since? Uh, yeah, so passed? they're. I don't think it's like an in law or somebody doing yeah, it. That's now, right. Isn't it? It's the uh, son in law. Son in law is in charge really of cool. the Warren archives, everything now. But yeah, you know he's going to make that money. That's We're going to oh, have yeah. to make a pilgrimage, Lindsay. Yeah. Oh, man. At some point. All right. Up. So um, I do want to bring up um, the uh, the fact that people don't know this yet, but you two are talking about putting together a new podcast. Can we talk about that a little bit? The name and the what's going oh, on and all that stuff. Cats out of the bag. Meow. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with talking about. Meow. Uh, <laughs> ADHD. Like, we're here. <laughs> uh, it's going to be called Ghosts in the Attics, Bodies in the Basement. It's going to be a paranormal true oh. crime podcast. So each episode uh one of us will cover will rotate between like who's more intrigued by this type of story that week uh rotate between a paranormal story and a true crime story or sometimes they'll cross over and it'll be like this is fact or fiction type thing so we're, we're really jazzed about it that's awesome man uh that is so cool um i love of course true crime i'm obsessed with true crime um, one of the cool things I got to interview Jeff Mudgett, who was the great, great grandson of H.H. H. Holmes. Um, oh, wow. And That's so awesome. he was really cool. He had that show American Ripper and stuff. And he, man, boy, some of the stuff he told me about. And so it, it just fed my need for older. I, would, I wouldn't go around. Pro, I wouldn't go around proclaiming that. You know what I mean? What? That like, I love on crime? <laughs> No, 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 serial no, killers. I, 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 <laughs> well, like my my father, my great great grandfather, you know, butchered millions of innocent. Oh, people. are you kidding me? This has made him bank. He's got a book out. He had a history Blood money. show. He is trying Blood because money. his big thing was that he's trying to connect. Um, which it's it, man, it, the, the evidence looks pretty good that Jack the Ripper may have been H. H. Holmes because H. I've H. heard Holmes that theory was in England at the time when all the ripper murders happened i mean oh, really got the proof yeah. where he was on the ship that went over to england this guy was a surgeon oh, wow. um you know all the th it man it's really good evidence like i gotta say <laughs> so, that would be really interesting if they could narrow that down and like put a pin in it yeah song. he's yeah. he's been trying to that's what american ripper was all about um and uh, he was really mad because they changed the last episode on him without talking to him um, and he was like, yeah, what they said there, that wasn't true. He's like, I'm going to give you the real deal. Because um, at the end, they tried to because they dug up this body um, and it turned out to be H.H. H. Holmes. And they said that um, or that it wasn't H.H. H. Holmes, excuse me. And because his DNA didn't match and different stuff like that. He's like, no, that's not what happened at all. They didn't want to do a second season. They were done. And they knew that if uh, we had said that it was connected to me, that it was H.H. H. Holmes, they'd have to be a second season. And there was all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and they didn't want to do it because it's all about money and because it was getting expensive. Like one of the things was they found all these like um, barrels uh, from the cement factory that they think Holmes hid some of the early bodies in because he worked at the cement factory right along the yeah. river there. That's really cool. And yeah, so they wanted to take a diving team because they had a radar thing that found them. They, they wanted to take a diving team and History Channel told them that the city of Chicago said no, that they went to the mayor and all this stuff and they said no. And that they couldn't do it well like two years later he meets rahm emanuel the the mayor of chicago and he's like oh my god i love your show so much he's like but it's weird that you guys said that we wouldn't allow you guys to do that we would have absolutely done that no one ever came to us about oh. it. and so it, they just didn't want to Shady. spend the money on the, mm. the diving team so he is not a um a fan of history channel <laughs> I don't blame him. Yeah, so he's too. been trying to get the rights out there to do, uh, you know, another movie or, or, or not another movie, but a movie or some things something, like that. Yeah. Uh, but but COVID really put it on the sidelines. Um, of course. So, but yeah, anyways, yeah, I love true crime. I'm super excited. What a great title. Oh, my God. I, 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 wish, I wish we had thought of that. I know. <laughs> we got it first. Uh, <laughs> you and you said your first episode should be coming out when? Uh, we're hoping for... St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. Oh, Sorry, I um, interrupted yeah. your drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a beautiful drum roll regardless. Um, mm. But yeah, any particular reason for St. Patty's Day? I mean, why not celebrate it the best way we can during COVID with some mm -hmm. awesome Irish folklore Ooh, facts and fiction? Yeah. 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 We'll, pro 
time. We'll definitely probably be doing some kind of leprechaun oriented episode. I, I didn't even think about that. No, yeah. I was looking up Irish folklores today and like there's a lot of creatures a lot I can't pronounce. Oh yeah. I, I'm doing my yeah. heritage a disservice because I don't speak that Gaelic. Gaelic yeah. and, <laughs> and it, uh, I butcher it badly. Um, but it's one of those things like there's so many creatures that there are to choose from not just leprechauns and a lot of people probably yeah. don't know that a lot yeah. of really popular ones that i had no idea were oh, irish yeah. origin i I'm, well like fairies fairies and irish folklore they're they're like little demons aren't they mm -hmm. so you got your yeah, fairies there's two kinds of fairies yeah because you got your brownies too yeah there's, there's multiple kinds of fairies so <laughs> Uh, the fave. I prefer F A E. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, like just the whole British Isles, like that whole area, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, like just uh, you know, I, I'm I'm a Wiccan, and so I, I and I'm Irish, Scottish, Welsh, English, no surprise. And so yeah. you know, I love looking into all of that stuff and all that lore. And yeah, there's just so many creatures that are untapped like you know i'm gonna make my shepherd's pie like i do every year mm. and then i'm gonna dive into some irish folklore so i think That's it's gonna so be a good great. time well we will so absolutely fun. make sure people get to hear that we'll be putting it out for you and sharing it and telling everybody about it because it's gonna be awesome thank you thank you awesome. we're, we're uh, pretty pumped um, so mm -hmm. here, here's a story uh, I meant to say earlier, but you talking about lore got me thinking about this is uh, we did um, on Fearscape, we did a, an episode on the boogeyman. And so we talked about uh, different types of boogeymans around the world. Same thing. We did the same thing with sleep hags years ago where we talked about sleep hags around the world. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to this one called um, Bobo, Bobo Rogan. So he's like the male version of Baba Yaga right yeah um and uh it's really really interesting and so for years when my nephew was little up until about three maybe four years old he would always say there was a man named babo in his room like this kid has always been able to see shit. well my grandpa bob died when i was five so my sister just always assumed that it was grandpa bob because she's a, yeah. a medium so she can see spirits and stuff but she, she never had access and she never understood why she couldn't see whatever it was but he was always like babo babo's playing music and all that stuff so we always thought it was the cutest thing forever until i did this boogeyman episode and realized <laughs> that babo rogan goes by babo that's his mm. nickname that he tells children to call him by he goes specifically to children and talks to children and adults cannot see him oh, um, oh, uh, hell and his no. name is Bob okay, well, guess what he does he plays music <laughs> I was That's like oh, oh, my what's concerning God. to me I is know. my my almost seven year old who we said sees all the weird stuff she used to call sippy cups babo and i never knew where she got it because she never drank out of bottles it's so weird and so, it's like so uh, now that's concerning <laughs> some uh some eastern european i forget where um getting when you're getting closer to turkey it's kind of that area um, I can't remember. I have to look it up. But man, I told my sister and she was just like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just like I never heard her that. soul. <laughs> right. Well, it's like, you know, like you hear things. You always wonder where it comes from. Like how many people call their kids bugaboo? Right. You've heard bugaboo. Like I, that I, is call a, my, I call my son boogie. There you go. Those are all terms for the boogeyman. That's where they came from. That people started taking them and trying to put them on kids to um, lessen essentially the effect. lessen the effect. Yes. And so that's where like bugaboo. boogeyman's not scary. You're the boogeyman. <laughs> yeah. Like, but hey, my little booger. Like, that's where booger, yeah. you know, like, oh, it's that's, crazy. Landon's nickname was Sugar Booger. Sugar Booger. Got, <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, my granny used to say it. So mm -hmm. it's like old people talk and yep. it just trickled down. I, if I'm around like certain family members for too long, my accent comes out real pop. Oh pop, man! Or, or if I drink, or if I'm tired. Yes. Or any well, combination of the. I gotta, three. I gotta live with mine. Yeah, he, he's contested. <laughs> Not Taylor's being contested. See, no, you didn't have an accent till you did that right there. <laughs> oh, I don't know. When I when I hear this back, I'm like, God. It all I'm depends on like, who we're I'm interviewing. I'm from Kentucky. Too. All my family's I'm, from I'm Kentucky. From I'm used to it. And whenever I met Lindsay, she's like, oh, I'm sorry about my accent. I was like, you have an accent? And she's like, well, I don't have an accent. I was like, well, I don't hear one. Well, it's yeah, funny, we lived know. in Colorado when we met. And I remember I used to work retail and I talk really fast. And I was just like, did you all find everything OK? And the customer goes, 
where's y'all from? I guess it sounded like I said y'all. And I'm like, oh, I'm from Kentucky. And he's like, well, yeah, we have people from Tennessee or that we know. And like, you sound like that. I'm like, no, no, I don't sound <laughs> anything like a Tennessee. Tennessee is a longer draw. <laughs> but yeah, I'm from with Frankfurt, me, a little different. With me growing up in uh, Toledo, Ohio, and then moving to Kentucky when I was 14, like, it depends who I'm talking to, what I'm drinking, on which accent's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. um, and my like my my wife cracks up because when I'm with my family, that northern accent comes out real hard, you know. But then I'm, when I'm with her family or whatever, or with friends, or because a lot of my friends are from Eastern Kentucky as well. Mm -hmm. um, That's where my mom's from. Yeah, and it's just so funny. And when I moved out here to Phoenix, like I have always just kind of felt like I have a middle of the road accent now, especially being an actor and things like that. Um, my first day at work, they're like, "Man, you boy, you got an accent, don't you?" And I'm like, N "What?" Do I don't? Do I, really? I still don't hear it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then I le I went back because you know my first day I I work in a call center, so they made me go back and listen to a number of my calls. Well, I would hear certain phrases, certain things come out, like the word file. I say file. <laughs> every <laughs> time i mean i could be like hey there i've pulled up your file like it'll be like the most straight <laughs> midwest accent and then drop to kentucky on like a number of different words <laughs> ridiculous I, when my I mom a oh. lot sometimes like i notice that with certain words i'm like whoa where'd that come from yeah i grew up in frankfurt but my mom her family's all from barberville which is like southeastern kentucky yeah I know. and I when she talks to her family she's suddenly saying can't for can't <laughs> and we're like there's not an i in can't mom and she's like well i can't help it and i'm like you don't talk like that until you're talking to them <laughs> yep that's like my friend's mom like they're from central kentucky but her family is uh, his mother's family is from eastern kentucky so like every once in a while she'll call piano piani and i'm like what you just say to me? <laughs> I've never heard that. Appalachian. Appalachian. Oh, Listening. hardcore yeah. Appalachia, man. Like it just <laughs> comes out, man. It's so, it's so hilarious. Um, so to, to get us to, I'm sorry, I'm ADHD. It's Tangent City. Um, but to bring it's it kind okay. of back around. Um, this is our do, life. <laughs> what do you guys have, like besides the podcast coming out, which by the way is going to be super great. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys got any other stuff in the pipeline? Are you guys working on some new books, um, some things we like that? Always. <laughs> We've been working on a story together, actually. Mm -hmm. Another in the realm of, it's in the same like universe as lost in gray i was gonna ask yeah so yeah. it's but a character, completely different characters yeah like it's a character son? that was yeah. in like the prologue yeah like a little so, side character like a side character then. gets her own story now uh, awesome. it's gonna be called bodies beneath the autumn leaves God, that's oh. creepy as shit. i love that title that sounds like <laughs> yeah. a good like thriller why can't we come title? up with shit like this that's all, Anna. I'm horrible at titles. My first was called Paranormalish. <laughs> <laughs> and then that I title that. came. I, I, mean, I kind of like that too, though. Too, yeah. Because I, I was like, I can't think of a title. And my dad goes, Well, what would you consider it? I said, I don't know, Paranormalish. He's like, Well, there you go. That's your title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, oh. I'm not great with titles. She is. She's like, she'll say something. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that'd be a great title. And. Sometimes we remember to write them down and other times they get lost. Or in the then sometimes phone. Lindsay's phone breaks and then we lose a ton of notes. Oh, I was able to back man. up a lot of my notes, but I did That's, lose some. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask good, that. But devastating. Yeah, I was going to oh, ask that. Before, What's the process of writing together? I mean, do you guys like sh flip chapters or is there a process uh, well, of how to write together? Well, when we did Lost in Grey, um, I had actually started NaNoWriMo back in, what was it, like 2015? And I got stuck at like 10,000 words and it went nowhere. And then like a year or so later, Anna wrote a story that was completely separate. And then she got stuck and it went nowhere. And then fast forward to 2017, somehow we got on the subject of looking at these stories and we're like, these are very similar. And so we put them together and like we connected each, the pieces. Each story had a coma person in it. Yeah, oh, like it was it was crazy how similar it was. So we just connected the dots there. And then um, basically we would each get ideas of things that we wanted to put into the story. So we would write that chapter or send it to the other one. Yeah, or send whatever. It to the next one we would. Um, so like if Anna wrote it, she would send it to me. I would sit down, read over it add things in change things whatever you have to mention how awful my talk to text yes, is though. she she <laughs> would do my talk sister to text. kelly 
she would do oh. talk to text so a lot of the rewriting was me just deciphering and i'd call her what is this supposed to say <laughs> but then um so then like i would rewrite send it back to her and then we would get on we're, we're always on facetime so then we would be working while on facetime and just sitting down reading it out loud to each other editing as we went together so that way it all blended so at some point we both had a hand in every word that went into that story exactly whether wow. we originated it from our own brain or not like we touched every individual piece of that and then of course there were together. pieces that we just came up from scratch together on the phone yeah wow that's well, fascinating yeah. man yeah. Like, I, I, man, and i don't know how other people do it i mean honestly somebody was like you know it, i expected it to come off like reading two separate people's writings but it didn't come off that way i was like oh thank god <laughs> what a compliment yeah you know like one of my favorite pairs of course is stephen king and his son joe hill whenever because i love both of them separately as authors but you know the stories they've written together have been great and yeah the same to you guys it's like th that's fascinating and it's like i you know lance and i work together we're fighting and punching each other and we're not even writing a book together it's like how do you not like clash yeah. heads on that and you know like, oh because we're just the same person uh, that's what we always say we're, we're extensions of each other yeah, That's what you've always like, said. Well, and like it's really important, and like I'm gonna get all like on my soapbox for a second, whatever, <laughs> because nobody nobody understands our relationship, and they're like, I just wish I could have what y'all have. Well, that's <laughs> cute, but you can't have what we have for a lot of reasons because, you know, for one, this is years of effort and trauma and mm -hmm. and everything. Growth growth i mean if we have a disagreement which is very rare it's usually about tv shows books or music minuscule, that's understandable <laughs> minuscule yeah. but also like very important shit. right um, <laughs> but we'll be like no let me explain to you like, why you don't you don't like that let me but... explain to you why i think this is good and you should give it a shot and like but if it was something more serious we would have an adult conversation mm -hmm. instead of being petty like a lot of other relationships have gone and it's just like a lot of people don't get that like we what, what was it what was that word again conversation conversation yeah, yeah, communication I haven't heard, I, wow <laughs> I, I haven't heard that in a while no it's yeah. funny we we you know we a lot better we're both improvisers and so we talk about that a lot I, you know when i teach corporate team building and stuff too that yes and idea is that it's like okay here's my idea you know and the other person just immediately says okay yeah. yeah and here's yep. what i can add to it and here's how this can work maybe it's not i'm not familiar with it or whatever but I, that's exactly what it sounds like you guys already do is you appreciate and respect the other person's idea so much right off the bat that you're already finding ways to add to it so well, right. I, like I, the whole premise behind lost and grace started because i told her she needed to write more and i was like giving her a pep talk <laughs> oh, let me just say Anna did not know she was a writer until one day, I think it was maybe when I was writing my original short story that became my portion of Lost in Cray. She just texted me a journal entry she had written the night before. She's like, I had a really bad night. Like I wrote, like they can just send that over to me. So I would kind of know like, where her headspace was that day. And I was like, do you know you're a writer? She's like, no, no, I'm not. I'm like, no, seriously, you're a writer. And then that excerpt actually ended up in the dedication. That's fantastic. Yep. That's so cool. Nice. I really, really like that. I mean, and that's precisely why we had to have you guys on together. You know, not to say that you're no good apart, but it's just like the this story together is what makes you guys stand out so much. Not just your works together, but even your work separately. I'm sure that they have influenced your solo stuff too. Yeah, well, Absolutely. everything that she like writes, she runs by me and vice versa and mm -hmm. like, it's not that like we need each other's approval. We're just so damned excited to share yeah. it with the other person because she's my biggest supporter. I mean, next to my husband, but he doesn't write. So it's a different type yeah. of support. Yeah. yeah. And like, and then it, outside of Lindsay, her dad is like, whoa, but he's he, also a writer. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a phenomenal writer, but like, he's like the biggest pep rally. Whoa, go team go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he will make you feel jazzed about yourself in like five seconds flat so that's fantastic it's just nice to have good support team in place yeah right and especially when you're a creative type because because you want to well, share your stuff but you don't always want to share it publicly right so i know before i even had the idea like to put out exercising my mind those are all just things i wrote going through hard times and and i heard every single one of them before it ever was even an idea to make a book mm -hmm. 
And because it's things that I wanted to share and I'm like, I could share it yeah. with her because she's a good support, but she'll also be like, hey, what about saying this? Like changing things up, especially when I decided to make it a book. Yeah. So that way people can't be like, are you writing about me? <laughs> yeah, and I, I told you, exercising your mind still hits me deep. <laughs> like, oh, well, what a compliment. Still, Cause that was, yeah. I've never been so scared to hit publish on a book in my life. Oh man, I, <laughs> Not to say I'm glad you did. Cause I know that was hard, but I'm glad you did. Cause it spoke to me. I'm glad I did too, I because, it, yeah. cause it does well, it, help. It to shows know your, it shows through. your range. It's yeah. more than just, I write spooky stories. It's look at me. I, I write brilliant shit. Like oh, you are just absolutely fantastic, and I, I love you to pieces. I, I agree oh, this on you. for both of you, to be honest with you. Uh, both of you are absolutely fantastic. Um, and to ask this, so the, kind of the last question here I want to ask is, um, you know, you got somebody who's interested in writing or maybe writes, uh, you know, little stories in their journals or, or whatever. What kind of advice would you give to an up and coming? And it doesn't necessarily have to be a horror writer, though, of course, that's our edge here. But still, you know, you've got somebody that wants to take their writing to the next level. What do you suggest? Writing prompts are an excellent place to start if you don't know where to start besides like just journal entries. Um, Lindsay gave me this book, actually, it's called Write the Story and it's got a bunch of writing prompts in it. And it's really been helpful for when I get stuck. Um, beyond that, um, write down your dreams, write down your fears, write down your hopes, just write, write a review of something sitting next to you. Give it like an honest review. Nobody has to read this, just get words out and the more you write, the more natural it feels. Absolutely. That's and um, I would also just say, kind of going back to something I mentioned earlier, if, if it is somebody who's wanting to write scarier things, don't be scared. Or even if you are scared, push yourself to go beyond that high school line. Yeah. Of like, yeah. you can write whatever you want. It doesn't matter if like, if in high school, oh, that's a little inappropriate. You're going to go to the counselor. Something's wrong with you. Like, just write it because I promise you there's more messed up stuff out there. <laughs> Amen. Turn, yeah. On, yeah. turn on the news. <laughs> yep. Reality yeah. is always a lot more horrific than your horror. Well, yep. and if you, if you think that your Google search history is going to be scary, then, you know, make it as fictionalized as possible. It doesn't have to be a nonfiction book. Yep, or use a Tor browser. <laughs> what are the other? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to give one quick story uh, before we get out of here, just to show the weird connection. Um, and Lindsay knows this is when I was moving out here. Um, I one of the stops on the way to Arizona was Elk City, Oklahoma. We just picked it. It was a random ass stop point that we we're like, yeah, we'll stop there. And there happened to be this like Route 66 museum and just this different stuff when we're going through. And they're like, oh, where are y'all from? I said, oh, I'm from Kentucky. And they're like, oh, we just had somebody here from Kentucky the other day. How weird is that? And then her and I were just chit chat and she's like, oh, that's weird. My dad was just there. I was like, holy shit, that's who they were talking about. And it was yeah. We were like a day or two apart from each other in this very small town. That's crazy. Because <laughs> that was October, right? Somewhere yeah, around it was there. October. Yeah, that's when my dad and sister were on their way down here to come visit us. <laughs> that's so, so funny. funny. Yeah. Like that, that wow. The other person from Kentucky is connected to me. I was laughing so hard when I found that What a that small out. world, right? Yeah, what an absolutely small world. Well, if you ever find yourself in Oklahoma, hit me up and we'll yes, get and whenever coffee we, Yes, for sure, because we usually something. tend to drive through there on uh, the, the road uh, to Kentucky if we drive. So absolutely. Um, before we go, I want to give you guys a chance to, um, you know, share, you know, plug your stuff. We know Amazon right away. You guys can find most of your stuff on there. And is there anything else you wanted to plug? Uh, yeah, coming in like three weeks, our podcast, Ghosts in the Attic's Bodies in the Basement. Um, and stay tuned for hopefully within the next year, aut uh, Bodies stories. Beneath Autumn Leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I want some audio versions. Me and Lance will do that. Okay. If, yeah, if somebody yeah. can read our books, because like I can't read. Oh, I will glad. Out loud. I do audio stuff. I do voiceover. I would oh. gladly read. Your well, books. then we need to talk because I have many a people say, "Put this on Audible," and I'm like, oh, I have no. I have friends I'll, ask me all the time. Yeah, to do I'm Audible, signed up and on I'm Audible just to do voiceover. <laughs> so yeah, we will definitely talk because I would gladly reread your guys' books again and do it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so Lindsay, you got anything else for you at all? 
Um, well, I do have a blog. I don't update it as frequently as I should, but if you're into some sporadic writing that's not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> paranormal and all that side and just like life stuff, that is uh, straightupthoughts.weebly.com. Awesome. Yes. And uh, we love you guys so much. Thank you guys for coming over and sharing your time with us and talking to us. And uh, I'm just, I'm excited. Uh, we will have you guys back again for sure. And uh, we'll, we'll do something together. Maybe we'll watch a movie together or sure. review a book or something. We'll have us some fun. Uh, but thank you so much, Anna. Thank you so much, Lindsay. So we got Lindsay Behe and Anna Tipperly. Thank you so much. Woo! Thank you. Woo! Thank Good you show, so guys. much for having us. And with that, dear friends, we come to the end of another delightfully disturbing episode of Misters of the Dark. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you to the Fearscape Media Network, and thank you to Corey Adams and Ashley Jones Adams from Nothing Wrong for our musical theme. And, and yes, yes, goodbye, Miss Behe. Farewell, Miss Temperley. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Oh, shit. Stefan, what are we going to do? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, listen, I've been giving it some thought, and then it occurred to me. Uh, mm -hmm. when, was the, when was the last time we did some good old-fashioned demon hunting? <laughs> you don't mean. Oh, you know it. Get the sod off double-barreled shotguns out of the closet! <laughs> But before we go, dear friends, I will leave you with this. Everybody is a book of blood. Wherever we're opened, we're red. Good night! Yo, she-witch, suck on this. <laughs> <laughs>